It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. And yet, despite the risks, most fishermen would never change their jobs, nor their lifestyles. What motivates these men? What makes them challenge nature and the elements? Some of the answers may lie in the hunt for the shoals of herring in the cold waters of the Northern Hemisphere. The techniques may vary from one part of the world to another, but the physical and mental efforts unite this brotherhood of the seas. See where all the corks are down, that means fish. In Alaska, the sailors on board Shadowfax need to catch the greatest number of herring in the shortest possible period of time. In Europe, the men of the Sandetti trawl the North Sea and the Channel in a huge factory ship. If you were here just for the money, you wouldn't stay long. Her sailors are here for weeks at a time, often facing extremely hostile seas. The journey into the heart of this unique universe begins off the coast of Alaska in the Sitka archipelago. Each spring, hundreds of thousands of herrings head towards the Bay of Sitka to reproduce and spawn. The fishing banks are preceded by an impressive flotilla of fishing boats from every port in Alaska. Jamie Ross, the captain of the Shadow Fax, is trying his luck once again. After five days at sea, his young crew will soon enter the fray as they take on their rivals and the rules. We need to make money here, so it's 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 that's don't get me wrong. It's very important in that regard too. You know, we all are in kind of tough financial straits about this time of year because um, the last time we made any money was back in September. You know, it wouldn't be spring without coming to Sitka, and and uh, I guess I personally feel it's very privileged to be part of this fishery. It's a very it's the smallest fishery in Alaska as far as numbers of participants. In the Sitka Sound, the regulations for fishing herring are very strict. Before heading out to sea, the fishermen are subjected to a scientific ritual organized by the authorities. Everyone is waiting for news from Dave Gordon, the marine biologist. He's the man in charge of fishing in this part of Alaska and has a nickname. He's known as God Almighty because he is the one who makes the decision when to open the fishing season, as well as how long it should last. Sometimes when the fish are up in the shallows, you can't see that from the vessel, so the airplane gives you the opportunity to see those fish, give you a better handle on what the volume of fish is in the area. So I'm, that's obviously a big uh, determination on determining where we fish, uh, that there's a uh, not too many fish where you might exceed your harvest goals or also the other side of it is uh, too few fish and uh, mobilizing this massive fleet and it would be very painful if you put them on too little fish. And... So let's see, there's about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 sea lions there. Yeah. Ooh, they're looking under the water. Ooh, they're so fast. Awesome. Hey, Ben. Mom and Dad seeing the sea lions, Ben. <laughs> right here, too. Good looking right here. With marine mammals beginning to arrive to feed off the herring, Jamie isn't the type to sit idly by in port. He's already at sea and looking for fish. Wow, that's surprising. The fish were over there yesterday, now they're not. So he's he's looking in a spot where we were hoping with some good fish. No, I haven't seen anything. That's very strange, huh? So that's what's cool about the fish. They're just in in this mode, they're just swirling all over the place trying to find where they wanna let us spawn. So.
He orders the nets out briefly to catch a few herring to judge the quality of the fish, and specifically of their eggs, something the Japanese are particularly fond of. The eggs, known as sacro, are what are of real value in the catch. Oh, this, that's about 140 gram, 140 gram, and then green, green, green. Very immature row. This is a white, see the white okay, color? This one's good. Here's a, this, mature row. So see the difference in the two? The golden color, the sticky, this is hard, and this is sticky, so this is good. This is, no. Biologist Dave Gordon appears satisfied with his flight over the bay. The entire fishing fleet has set off for the north of the archipelago. The official start to the Sitka herring season will begin up there in about one hour's time. There's a lot of pressure on the crews, as they will have at most an hour or two, at worst just minutes, to cast their nets. The duration of the fishing depends on the number of herring in the bay and also their age. After the green light is given, it's whoever's first around the fishing banks. All 50 or so fishing boats hire a pilot to steer them to the fish, and Jamie, the skipper of the Shadowfax, is no exception. There's a potential for that, for, uh, for there to be fish along in there, um, up in their belly, because there did seem to be fish moving that way. Yeah, I'll just check it out. The nearest fish over on Crow Island there, but they're you know, in the spawning mode, there's in the spawn and outside of the spawn there, right on the beach, there's visible fish. Okay, it looks like some boats are definitely over there, huh? Billy's small seaplane is taking off, and the pilot will quickly spot the telltale dark patches just below the surface. I love the pilot sets because, you know, my boat, that's got one of my boats designed and built for speed. Just, just come flying in, for just totally on robot mode, just do exactly what he says. And, th you know, and that's where this boat's really shined in the past, is just have uh, the pilot say, Jamie, 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 get over here, and just whoosh, and beat, you no know, racing and passing everybody and getting in there. Hearing about Joe back off here, bow. Oh, maybe a quarter mile away, you might want to check it out. Looks like a pretty good set of cool. The throttle's on full aboard the wild horses, but deep sea diver Mitch Coven is behind schedule. Time to get rocking, baby. We didn't come here to play Scrabble. <laughs> 60 miles an hour, yeah. Wild horses. I don't think anybody will pass us today. I'm sure of that. The whole fleet has left before us. We're just catching up. Mitch is in charge of safety, and he is on standby to deal with any emergency. His presence will soon be required. Thousands of kilometers from Alaska, where the strictly regulated fishing is about to start, another crew is readying to get out to sea. On the bus from Brittany in western France are 27 sailors from ports such as Saint-Malo, Fécamp and Boulogne. 27 men, some of whom, like their fathers and grandfathers before them, are known as Terre Nuevas. These men spend more time at sea than on land. Up to 300 days a year in the North Sea, the Channel, and the Gulf of Gascony following the shoals of herring and mackerel. Their large vessel is the Sondetti. Registered at Faircamp, it's a 90 meter long deep water trawler that flies under the French flag, but its home port is on the North Sea coast.
This trip, like most others, will last for three weeks. To some, it's painful to be away. For others, like Frank, it's a relief. It's a pain to leave, but here we're fine. It's a sailor's life, that's all. The thing you're looking for on land, you can get it here. And where you wouldn't ever talk to your wife about something, here you talk about it to your mates. Little things like that. A sailor's life, like I said. Sailors on the high seas often talk of freedom or adventure when asked why they do this job. They certainly go to places few others visit and witness sights that can take the breath away. But few mention the challenges of living together in cramped conditions and always at the mercy of a temperamental ocean. On the bridge, one of the Sandetti's key crew members is getting ready. His name's Eric. He's the ship's number two, the bosun. This isn't like being on land. It's a different society here. People's true characters emerge very quickly in this environment. You need to mark out your own territory and then not let people walk all over you. The captain can see what's going on, even up uh, from the bridge, but he can't get directly involved, so it's up to me to intervene if there's a little problem, to warn the guys to avoid certain places and, and stuff like that. And that's it, mainly. The biggest risk is to be washed overboard, and then you need to wait for the boat to turn around and get you, or not. The long fishing nets are in the water and the schools of fish are starting to show up on the ship's radar. For Captain Vincent Le Breton, it's a crucial moment. With an easterly wind gusting at over 50 knots, about 100 kilometers an hour, getting the nets into the water is difficult. Come on, Victor. Steer five, five. The fish are right under the boat at this time. And at this time, at the end of the day, that should be fine. Aboard the Sandetti, once the fish has been hauled up onto the deck, the sailors work day and night in six-hour long shifts. In a few minutes, Eric the bosun will know whether the catch is a good one. French fishermen are preparing to hoist the large net on board off the Pacific coast of Alaska. The show is about to begin. The 
pilots do a last sweep over the ocean to spot the herring shoals. And on the water, the crews are standing by to spring into action. The Department of Fish and Game vessel has arrived. And now it's marine biologist Dave Gordon who takes the lead. This is the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Sickestown Sacro Fishery will occur in approximately one minute. One minute. Okay, get ready, guys. I might do this in a row here. 45 seconds. Okay, get ready. The countdown's begun. 15 seconds. Shadow fact, Jamie is in the starting blocks. Two, one, let her go, let her go, let her go, let her go. Oh my god, a massive school here. Stay open, men. Stay open. Men, stay open. Stay open. Jamie has been following the instructions from Billy, his pilot. He's managed to spot a large shoal of herring in shallow coastal waters. To complete okay, the maneuver, the Shadow Fax's fishing nets have snagged on the ocean floor. Don't worry about it. No, no, just pull. The herrings have escaped, and the net could be damaged. For the crew, this might turn into a catastrophe. Given the extent of the damage, Jamie decides to leave the fishing banks to look for another net. I got a couple cool 300 off my side. French coast, the sailors of the Sandetti are about to find out whether the first catch is a quality one. What a 
We call it the doormat because you can walk on it. There must be 70 tons, I'd say. Mind the tube. We'll go any second now. I always say that if you were here just for the money, you wouldn't stay long. It's a choice. There's a little adventure, of course, but also the pride in being different, to hear people say, you have an extraordinary job. It warms your heart to know that there are people who wonder what it's like to do what we do. Then there's adventure, lots of things, and the scenery, the things that we see. The day's catch allows the factory to finally get up to speed. With each expedition, more than 1,000 tons of fish are refrigerated, packaged, and then stored in the Sandetti's enormous hold. For now, the ship's belly is relatively empty. The expedition is just beginning, and the man who will be stuck in minus 30 degree temperatures is Frank, who, with four other sailors, will take it in turns in the hold to stack 60,000 boxes, each weighing 25 kilos. Eventually, all the frozen fish will find its way to Africa. Sometimes we feel a little sad. We think, what am I doing here? Well, it's like that everywhere. I tried to settle down on dry land because I had a girlfriend who didn't want to leave anymore. But I tried that for a while and then got bored. It's boring. It's not the same pace. And here we have a second family, our buddies, our habits. You might think it's the same old thing, but it's not. We wouldn't say we were unlucky to be on land, but, but then later it becomes routine. I'd get bored after a while. I'd get messed up too. So I went back to sea. Up on the bridge, Vincent Le Breton has been told about an incident in the engine room. Xavier, can I come down and take a look at the compressor? The chief mechanic has noticed some Freon gas is leaking, and a part of the cooling system is no longer working. There's a leak inside the compressor? Well, when it's positive, it means there's Freon, so we will need to resupply it. The factory has to shut down. It's losing Freon, and if it goes on, we'll need to refill it. The chief mechanic has just a few hours to find the leak. If he doesn't, the captain will need to steer to the nearest port for repairs.
some members of the crew make the most of it and take some downtime. Oh, there are times when the mood on board isn't great. Well, that happens from time to time, but there's one thing I've noticed, and that's what's important at the end of the day, and that is that this is a trawler, and to get through this, we need to fill it with fish. It's that simple. That's how we get out of this, get up and running again. When things go badly, it's often because the fishing is poor, and therefore it makes everyone think about it. But when the factory is up and running well, then there's no time to think of anything else. And that's important. That's how we get out of this. In the hold, the mechanics have at last found the problem and can start repairing the refrigeration system. The factory ship can get underway again. And on the bridge, the ship's maneuvers can resume. If there's a passion for the job, there are also some things we need to face up to. It's an egotistical job in some ways. To us, it's interesting because it's something we like to do. But then again, we won't be popular because of what we do. From time to time, Eric the Bosun, like most other professional fishermen, questions his career and the reaction of some on dry land to what he does. He can't understand why fishermen are still considered to be pillaging the sea and scraping the oceans clean. Deep sea herring fishing takes place just below the surface and the nets remain underwater just long enough to catch the daily quota. It's nothing like the trawlers that use drag nets to graze the ocean floor for hours at a time. Another trawler, the Prince Bernhardt, joins the Sandetti. Alone, the two ships will scour the area and split the huge shoal of herring. At Sitka, however, it's a lot more hectic. Jamie weaves in and out of the other boats, but is heading to port to repair the torn nets. These fucking idiots! God damn it, get out of the fucking way! Watch these skiffs! Tell, tell, tell him on the radio that he's in for Mistula Bay. My fucking steering is all fucked up, so I have to use this thing. I, it's a long ways away, Ben. I don't know where the hell it is. It's all the way in Prince Mistula. We're 20 minutes away. Sorry, but I just don't know. I just, I'm, I gotta concentrate here. This fucking thing is all over the place. Just destroyed a freaking hundred thousand dollar saying for nothing and caught zero. Why the fuck is he in Promiscula Bay? God damn the fucking shit. Pardon my language, I'm sorry. Jamie and his crew hope to get ship shape before Dave Gordon shuts down the fishing for the day. The other fishermen continue their harvest. So far, some 5,000 tons of herring have been caught. Everyone agrees this year's yield is meager so far, but it's still good enough to celebrate and spend money in the local pubs.
On board the Shadowfax, they're doing what they can to ensure the next 24 hours won't be another wasted day at sea. They not only tore their nets, but also broke one of their hydraulic engines. This is a hydraulic pump, which is required to bring our net in. And the shaft, the seal in the shaft, blew, exploded. And so a steady stream of hydraulic oil is coming out. And we need to have, this is very important. We can't bring the net in. We cannot bring the net in without this. I always say, just do it. That's kind of my motto. So I've actually have not been taught. I've just kind of learned by being forced necessity to do things myself. So. Voila. Very good. Keep going, go, go, go. My wife, before we had children, she fished with me for many, many years, for nine years before we had children. And she's always been my lucky charm. So I, I, I'm, I, I haven't done so well personally the last couple of years. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I miss my wife. She needs to be here. So I don't know. We're talking about maybe getting her down here for the rest of the fishery. She's my everything. So I need my lucky charm. So. <laughs> The sun is out on the Sitka archipelago. Dave Gordon is flying again to determine where and when fishing can resume. But what is happening below is strange. I guess that's pretty consistent with what I had yesterday. It was clip that way to your left. So that's not spawn on there, is it? Just uh, seeing what it looks like. The sea is completely white. It means spawning. The period of reproduction is about to begin. Pretty much to that point. Yep. Okay. But if the egg laying begins and the fish empty themselves of all their eggs, then the fishing fleet might as well pack their bags. This is our future right here. The future of the fishery is the spawn coming back every year, every year. It's 10 o'clock. We're going to have an announcement in one hour. And we could fish as early as 1 or 2 o'clock, I would imagine. So, but we just need to, we'll have to stay away from these fish and concentrate on other areas. So really cool. Very Mother Nature at its best right here. Very awesome to see. The Shadowfax sets a northerly course, as Jamie believes the fishing will take place in a creek he knows well. <laughs> I know. Well, anyway, the, the situation has changed dramatically again. There's a, right off of this point in the middle, Eric, there's just a massive school right off this point. Holy shit. But anyway, so now, now the uh, frickin' fish are spawning en masse. In, inside a crow past, all south middle island, they just at 13 percent. Notice the hairy went from nothing yesterday, and now they're just going insane. So, <laughs> we'll get these. This is this is this is what we want. This is what you want. This is a perfect set because this would be, yeah, if we get them, this will be an enormous set, and then you'll just have phenomenal footage. Look at that. Look at that. See, so that's that's thousands of tons. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's truly awesome. That's what we want during the opening. On board, some are celebrating. While elsewhere, others have to cope with the bad weather that suddenly descended on the channel. On the Sandetti, the factory ship, the infernal pace continues despite the awful conditions. Yeah, there's nothing better than a boat in bad weather somehow. We're not exactly thrilled, but I've got photos. You see a boat in completely calm waters. Well, it's just a boat. But a boat that's being tossed about, well, that's beautiful. Anyway, yes, there are some pretty heavy seas out there.
Voilà, je suis, je suis dans ACDC, là. Un truc qui bouge, quoi, j'ai pas de chance. Non, je suis écoutant à mon rock music. C'est ce que j'aime. We need to be careful about the piles of boxes. If they collapse, well, we need to be vigilant. Sometimes you get caught by surprise. But if you feel the boat going, well, it's just too bad for the cartons, even if they do fall off. Can't do anything about it. If it goes, it goes. If it hits you, you'll feel it. Last year, it was, it was Barber and his tooth. He lost a tooth. The carton slipped out of his hands and bang, there goes his tooth. It happens. The majority of accidents occur at the stern, in high seas and stormy weather. It throws the working crewman off balance. It takes just a second's carelessness and a large wave can sweep you away. Or a cable that becomes taut too quickly can slice through you. This is not man's natural habitat, so there are some risks one should never take. You need to know the limits. If we're out in bad weather, there will be some guys on the bridge, and how much risk we take, that's my decision. Is it risky to go quickly or turn or maneuver up on the bridge in the ocean? We're tiny. You have to be humble. You must never feel more powerful than the elements. This time, however, it's not above decks but below where an accident has happened. With the waves violently ramming the sides of the ship, one of the mechanics has broken his leg while repairing a machine in the factory ship. Can, the ship will detour to the nearest port. But to save time, the captain turns to the French Navy's rescue helicopters for help. broken leg, ample evidence of just how fragile humans are when the sea unleashes its power, and a reminder to those on board to pay attention, or risk even worse. The hold needs to be filled and the fish offloaded as quickly as possible. The fishermen are paid a percentage and losing time brings in nothing. On the Sunday tea, life is tough and the wage hard earned. The crew make good money. A simple sailor working the hold can earn as much as 60,000 euros a year. In Alaska, too, the fishing crews make a good living from the herring, but only if they're the quickest. They're trying to find us a school of fish. There's a... I think there's a pretty good amount of herring in this little cove right here. So if you can get us lined up on a spot that is uh, not too rocky, we'll be able to set our saying one more time and hope we get a good set. It's debatable, though. <laughs> towards this coast, towards Inner Point, to see if there's anything... But the crew of the Shadowfax is waiting impatiently for the second round of herring fishing. And lots of it. Okay. See, I, have, I wear these the closer it gets to the opening. There are those noise-canceling aviation headset, and I can concentrate. There can be a lot of noise around me, you know, people talking, etc., and I don't even... I kind of tune in so I can uh, con concentrate, listen to what everybody's saying, and look at the stuff. 
Trigger point is usually a good, a good place to be looking because all those uh, needles come in. This time, Billy, Jamie's pilot, has spotted a shoal of fish just a few hundred meters from the Shadowfax's bow. At three in the afternoon, the fishing boats at Sitka are told they can go again. Mitch, the deep sea diver, is in charge of safety in the fishing zone and has a bad feeling. Four, three, two, one, open. Six pound tackle fishery is now open. This year, with the herrings beginning to spawn early, the season could be compromised. On the rear bridge of the trawlers, nothing seems to happen as planned. And there are an increasing number of problems. Some fishermen have used explosives and smoke canisters to steer the herring into their nets, but without success. Fucking Diver Mitch Coven is called in to help. Great cushion. The Lady Brenda has caught its nets in its propellers. Right. Look at the mess there are on the boat. Did you, did, can you film this? That is that is a total mess. And uh, they're going to have to resync the net. Uh, they could be gone for the rest of the day. For a little over six hundred dollars, Mitch frees the ship. For the crew above water, the fishing is over. The shadow fax, however, is homing in on the school of herring. According to the captain, there are some 90 tons of herring wriggling around in the giant mass. This time, Jamie lowers his nets at the right moment. Today's fishing will only last one hour. I forget how we do it. It's 
I think it's like a, it's, it's very similar to a, like a sporting event. There's the team aspect. You know, the, I have the three boats that I fish together. I have the pilot. And we have a long period of time that we've worked together. So there's the team camaraderie, just like any sport, you know, football, soccer. There's that, there's that, there's that aspect. And there's, there's the competitive aspect of the win. I get nervous. You see, I'm a wreck and oh, and I, and a big, big crash afterwards, wiped out. But it still is a great, it is, it's an adrenaline rush. I love it. Four PM exactly marks the end of hostilities in the Bay of Sitka. Jamie seems relieved as all his efforts have been rewarded. Uh, well, it's a, it's a very rough and, and uh, rugged environment, and I think because of that, the, the things that people do tend to be rough and rugged, a little more on the edge. So you're taking a certain measure of calculated risk, and it's, it's just like fishing, and fishing we're very used to calculated risk. So I think it goes with the territory, um, as we say. Um, you know, we, we, we play hard, work hard, but yeah, it's very rewarding, very rewarding. Jamie and his crew on the Shadowfax did all they could to salvage the herring fishing season. This year, the fish with the golden eggs began spawning too soon. And so nature seems to have come out on top. Before heading home to Homer to the north, the sailors take advantage of the growing surge to ride the waves. On the Sandeti, the end to a long three weeks at sea is in sight. In a few days, the hold will be filled to bursting. Captain Vincent Le Breton can relax a little. In these rare moments, the crew say the captain is a great defender of birds. The guys often see me take photos of the birds when we're turning. There are always plenty of birds near the ship. In fact, they think I'm a member of a bird society or something. Some of them bait the birds a bit, which I don't mind too much, but I do comment on it. So that's why they think I'm a member of some club, but I'm not. It's just that I like seabirds. This is their place out here. They do the tour of the boat, go around the other side in the wind. They glide and they break. And if they see something, they die for it. They do a grand tour. They freine. And if there's something, they go. Yeah, it's parti. See how they're diving? There are a lot for a few fish. It's funny to watch them. Just like the gannets that try to find their balance between the wind and the pace of the trawler, the men of the saint Deti are also looking to reconcile life at sea and life on land. The big trawler sails away, and it's the end of a journey into a different universe. For the men that work at sea in such extreme conditions, nothing can ever be taken for granted. Their pay often matches the high risks they take. But whenever the elements begin to go wild, the sailors will have to content themselves with whatever the sea has to offer.